There's deeply disturbing and very worrisome news coming from France. Yesterday, three people became victims of a knife attack at a church in the city of Nice. And it was carried out by a person who was angry about the cartoons made of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the most horrifying part of this attack was that one of the victims was an elderly lady aged 60. Now we have to understand that those people who are defending the Prophet against caricature by committing and perpetrating heinous crimes against innocent people are themselves making a mockery of the Prophet and his teachings of love, mercy and compassion. And the Quran clearly states that if you kill an innocent human being, it is equivalent to having killed all of humanity. And if at all we want to respond, we should respond in the way that the Prophet responded. The Prophet was also insulted, he was provoked and he was ridiculed. But he maintained his calm and composure. He did not allow someone else's unpleasant behavior to determine his attitude. This is why even when he faced disputes, controversies or insults, we see that he never resorted to unethical conduct. And for that matter, the Prophet even counseled his companions, never debase your character by saying that if people treat you well, you will treat them well. And if people harm you, you will do worse to them. Rather develop the habit of doing good even to those who harm you. And another very important aspect about the Prophet, peace be upon him, which we all have to understand, is that the Quran refers to him as a mercy to all mankind, a mercy for all of humanity. He is a person who represents or is a beacon of peace and well-wishing for the entire world. This is why the Prophet once even said that God wipes out evil with goodness. God doesn't wipe out evil with evil. And today we Muslims are trying to wipe out something unpleasant by creating further evil, further strife and conflict in society. And is this the model? Is this the example that we want to present before people as the prophetic example. This completely goes against the Prophet's teachings and the Prophet's practice or Sunnah. We see that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself faced a lot of opposition and hostility. But the Prophet did not dampen his opposition and hostility by trampling upon people, by denouncing people and by creating more enemies and more opponents. Rather, the Prophet erased opposition and hostility by actually forgiving those who wronged him, by joining hands with those who broke away from him. And most importantly, as the Quran itself says, the Prophet ignored people's hurtful talk. This is actually the model that we all have to adopt in the situation that we are facing currently. This is an extremely important point which all Muslims throughout the world have to reflect on. One of the aspects of this situation which we all fail to realize is that when we condemn and denounce people in very harsh and in vituperative language, then we actually create a lot of hatred and divisiveness in society. We create an environment and an atmosphere of we and they between us and the people of other communities. And it is in this atmosphere of antagonism which is fueled, we see these days, by fiery rhetoric against cartoons and caricature, 
that fills the minds of certain Muslims with deep rage. And when these young Muslims cannot control this deep rage, which is being fueled by fiery rhetoric, then they actually express this rage in the form of violence. And this violence is highly un-Islamic. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would have never encouraged such hate for one's fellow human beings. Rather, the Prophet would have said in the words of the Quran, good and evil deeds are not equal. Do good deed in return for bad deed and you will see that your enemy has become your dearest friend. This is the teaching that the Prophet would have given us in this scenario that we are facing. And another point which we all have to really reflect upon is that the Prophet's life and his teachings have been preserved in the form of his biographies, which we call the Sira literature, or in the form of his traditions, which we call the corpus of Hadith. So any statement made about the Prophet or any depiction done of the Prophet cannot itself become true because any serious minded person, any objective person would actually compare such a statement or such a depiction of the Prophet with the authentic record of his life and teachings. And if he finds a dissimilarity between the two, he will obviously reject that statement or depiction as an allegation or an accusation. And we actually see that many scholars who are not Muslims, who don't profess any belief in Islam. They have studied the life of the Prophet, the teachings of the Prophet, from the authentic record of his life and teachings, his sayings, and they have actually come to the conclusion, they have come to the conclusion that he was a harbinger of goodness, justice, and a far-sighted vision for humanity. But what we are doing by our actions today, we Muslims, what we are doing by our negative actions is that we are showing the Prophet in a reverse light. So our actions are being totally counterproductive. And this can also be understood in another way. Because we see that the Quran enjoins avoidance. Avoidance of something which we find unpleasant or untoward. And we have to understand the wisdom of this avoidance. And it can be clearly understood as far as the present situation is concerned. Because the cartoons or the caricature, which are the subject of heated debate and controversy right now, these were first published in 2015. And back then, in the year 2015, when they were originally published, the opinion of the French public was that these cartoons are an unnecessary provocation. They actually rejected the cartoons as an unnecessary provocation. But after the strong negative reaction from the Muslim community and also the killing of those people who made the cartoons, the French public opinion has been hardened. It has become more and more strong and stern. So people are now asserting their right to make cartoons, to display cartoons and support those who make cartoons. So what has our actions earned? What is the consequence of our actions? They have led to something which is totally even more unpleasant than what we wanted to originally deal with. So our actions have been totally resultless and counterproductive. They have not yielded anything. We have to review our actions in the light of the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet. When the Prophet was insulted, provoked or humiliated, he maintained his calm and composure. He showed a lot of self-restraint and he responded with a lot of reason, logic and effectiveness. His response was full of rationality. He appealed to people's reason. He would have definitely never encouraged the kind of mindless outrage and frenzy that we are seeing today. I pray that may Almighty Allah 
guide us to follow the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in every matter.